Hi, welcome to Market Board Videos. This video is about chemical reactions. And the first thing I want to talk about with chemical reactions is how do you know a chemical reaction has occurred? What evidence can you sense to know that a chemical reaction has occurred? Well, in basic chemistry, we look for four different things. And it does, you don't need all four of these. You can have one, you can have two, you can have three, you can have all four. But if you even see one, that means a chemical reaction has occurred. So let's go ahead down the list. First thing you look for is a precipitate. And a precipitate is when you have a solid that's produced as a result of a chemical reaction. Now I'm not talking about something like adding red Kool-Aid and blue Kool-Aid and a rock comes out of it. It's not always going to be that kind of solid. Sometimes it looks like your solution gets cloudy. And if you put it on a centrifuge and spin it around really fast, all that solid collects at the bottom of the test tube and the liquid is above it. You can tell it's been a solid. Sometimes it's a bit more obvious. You mix two liquids and this bright yellow stuff kind of falls out of solution. That's a precipitate. Second thing or another thing you can look for is energy change. Now by energy change, the most common way that we see energy change is with a temperature change. You may look at a chemical reaction and not be able to visually see anything, but if you wrap your hands around the test tube, you'll find that that solution got either colder or hotter, warmer or colder, and that tells you that a chemical reaction has occurred. You have a temperature change. Other ways that you can have an energy change, you may see a flash of light, you may hear a sound, or there may be an electrical uh, result. So if any of those things occur, you know, you know there's an or there's an energy change, which means there's been a chemical reaction. Keep in mind though that the most common is a temperature change. That's the one you're gonna, you're gonna experience most often. Gas formation, so was a gas formed? Sometimes you'll be able to actually see the bubbles. It'll look kind of like an Alka-Seltzer or something bubbling up, or like the experiment we did in class where you close the Ziploc and the bag got full of a gas, it inflated, you knew a gas was produced. So if you have gas formation, that is evidence of a chemical reaction. And the last thing that we look for is a permanent color change. So if something goes from clear to pink, and stays pink, you know you've had a chemical reaction. So here are the four things that you look for when you're looking for evidence of a chemical reaction. Did any one of those occur, or, or sometimes more than one, but you need at least one for um, evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred. So then let's talk about chemical formulas and, and those equations, if you will, with all those arrows and stuff that you see. Well, the ingredients, the stuff that you're gonna work with, they're called reactants. And they're always on the tail side of the arrow, not the pointy side, the other side. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. Look at your arrow. And whatever, wherever the tail is, this little blank spot, not the pointy spot, those are your reactants. That's the ingredients which you start with. If you make chocolate chip cookies, it would be the flour and the eggs and the vanilla and the sugar and the, and the chocolate chips and the, all that stuff. Those are your ingredients. The results are what you, get done, what you have when you're done, like chocolate chip cookies. The results are called the products the products. And that's always at the tip of the arrow. So whichever direction the arrow points, the arrow always points to the products. Not always left to right, but the arrow always points to the products. So a chemical reaction must be balanced, must be equal, due to the law of conservation of mass. It says matter, it cannot be created or destroyed. It can change form, but it can't be created or destroyed. So if you have so much uh, ingredients, you're going to get so many dozen chocolate chip cookies. Now I know that that differs because you make big ones and little ones and it might say you're going to get three dozen and you only get 16 because you made huge ones or whatever. But if you added up all your ingredients, the amount of stuff you start with has got to be the same amount of stuff that you end with. That's why we balance chemical reactions. Uh, we need to know that we're starting and ending with the same thing. So let's do two examples. We're going to do water. We take hydrogen gas, which is H2, and oxygen gas, which is O2, and that reacts to form. That's what the little arrow is. You say reacts to form or reacts to yield. Reacts to form water, H2O. So now let's, let's do a little bit of math here. You know how to count atoms. So how much hydrogen do I have right here? I have two. And how much oxygen do I have here? I also have two atoms, two and two. How much hydrogen do I have on this side? I have two. How much oxygen do I have on this side? I only have one. Well, you can see that I have the same amount of hydrogen on both sides, but different amount of oxygens. So I have to change something here in order to get two atoms of oxygen. The only thing I'm allowed to change is a thing called a coefficient, which is that little number in front of a chemical symbol. 
I can't change the subscript. It'd be great if I could just put two here, but H2O2 is no longer water. And we know it makes water. So if I need this to be two oxygens, I can put a two right here. Now I need to change some things. You have to be pretty good at counting atoms. If you're not good at counting atoms, go back and rewatch the counting atoms video. Very important that you can count atoms in order to do this. I still have two hydrogens and two oxygens. Now how much hydrogen do I have? Two times two. I have four hydrogens. How much oxygen do I have? Two times one. Remember we have that invisible one there? Two times one. I have two. So now my oxygens are balanced, but now my hydrogen's not balanced. I need to go back and look at this side. Is there anything I can do here to make this a four? Absolutely there is. If I make this a two, I have two molecules of hydrogen gas, one molecule of oxygen gas gives me two molecules of water. Let's see if that makes sense. So again, now we have to get rid of these because we changed something. How much hydrogen do I have? Two times two is four. How much oxygen do I have? One times two is two. And here I have four, and there I have two. Four hydrogens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, two oxygens. My equation is balanced. 2H2 plus 1H2O reacts to form two waters. You have to keep going back again and again and again. If you want a lot of practice on balancing chemical equations, watch the video on how to balance chemical equations, a quick and easy method. There's actually part one and part two, so start with part one, then go on to part two. Let's do one more example in this video, though. I have Mg magnesium and nitrogen, and that's going to react to form Mg3N2. I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did up here. How much magnesium? One, nitrogen, two, magnesium, three, nitrogen, two. Now, my nitrogen is fine, isn't it? But my magnesium is not. Again, I can only change coefficients. I cannot change subscripts. So is there anything I can do to magnesium to make it three? Well, sure, this one's pretty simple. If I made that a three, how much magnesium do I have now? Three. How much nitrogen? Still two. One times two is two. How much magnesium? Three. One times three is three. How much nitrogen? Two. One times two is two. Because remember we have that invisible one right there. Okay. So I have three magnesiums, three magnesiums, two nitrogens, two nitrogens. And I can say that that equation is indeed balanced.